Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hey, hey, it's me, it's Day9. Yo, we're gonna go ahead and play some good old fashioned Magic the Gathering today. Get out of my frame. Uh, but the big thing that we're gonna be doing today uh, in this laddering is we're gonna be playing best of three. Maybe a little bit of best of one here and there just to start with and warm up uh, with some of these decks. But we're going to be playing some of the uh, tip-top metagame decks right now that exist. And by that I mean um, you can look and see what's performing well in Magic Online, uh, at various paper Magic tournaments, this sort of thing. And just go implement those deck lists. Because <laughs> um, I felt like by the end of Guild of Ravnica I had a very strong sense of what the decks that I was up against were. Or even if it was some sort of jank, like, creation of someone, yeah, I had a pretty, pretty good idea of what was what I was going to be up against. Because there's just not that many cards that really continuously pop up again and again and again and again. So, uh, at this point in time, I have not played enough to get what the meta is like. Um, I mean, I can make competent decks, but... I want to be able to go to that next level, because I'd like to be able to be spending the month of February climbing up the Mythic rankings. So we're going to begin with uh, Meta Mono Red. I'm labeling them as Meta, so that way I can remember um, you know, which piece <laughs> of the show we're doing. I'm going to be playing each one of these for about an hour, so that way I can really get comfortable uh, with a variety of decks, and we can sort of rotate through stuff. Uh, Fanatical Firebrands, G2 Lava Runners, the Via Shino Pyromancers and the Chain Whirlers. I think that one of the most interesting questions um, a lot of the time when constructing a deck is like, what even are the cards that you cut from the current modern strong version of the deck in order to put in the new next level good cards? Because, for instance, if you recall from the previous um, Guilds of Ravnica, there were some scary ass cards, right? That looked really good, like Experimental Frenzy. This is the red card draw. Whoa, right? Um, it also included um, some people experimenting with Flame of Keld, this kind of thing. Uh, there was the uh, Steamkin. And, it, like, Steamkin, I think, is a great example of a card that's really, really, really good. Uh, but, interestingly is not being run in some of the mono red decks um which is which is kind of amazing right like what do you cut to put in some of the new cards the new cards very obviously are skewer the critics just essentially a one mana deal three damage great as well as light up the stage one mana draw two cards right if we want to put in these four which four do we cut the answer is four steamkins get cut four experimental frenzies get cut and the rest of the deck looks pretty much the same Wizards Lightning. See, I tried to experiment with cutting the uh, some of the Viachinos and the Gitu Lava Runners getting rid of Wizards Lightning uh, or getting rid of Lightning Strike as a card. This is something that I considered because I said, okay, let me keep in the Pyromancers because they're a wizard. Let me keep in the Lava Runners because they're a wizard, which will give me one mana Wizards Lightnings. Um, so yeah, I don't, maybe I don't need the Lightning Strike so I can squeeze in other stuff. But again, this is the sort of optimized lists that we are just straight downloading. Um, we're at 52 cards. I'm missing one wizard skewer. Oh yeah, of course, shock. Very obvious, cheap, efficient removal. So we have a few more slots. What else do we put in? Risk factor. Interesting uh, thing to note, risk factor had some struggles with experimental frenzy because if frenzy was out, you would cast risk factor and then experimental frenzy reads you cannot play cards from your hand. That's that third sentence there. So Risk Factor with Experimental Frenzy would sometimes run into some obnoxious collisions like this, but in this circumstance, nope, not in the slightest. And we have one more slot available, and interestingly, it's a Lava Coil. There's a good amount of Four Toughness Dudes, Four Toughness Dirtlers. Now, here's the, the thing that I really want to be working on, is the sideboarding. We have Electrostatic Field. There's three of these puppies in there. We have more Lava Coils for obviously mid-range matchups. Seem pretty reasonable to note. Act of Treason is what is in this list. Why, why are these cards in here? Why are these cards in here? This is, such, this is a baffling list to me. I actually don't like this sideboard. I'm going to look at another sideboard. Act of Treason, what? 
Okay, this I actually like a lot more. Okay. Ah, I see. You know, I actually like this this other deck a little bit better. This I prefer. I mean, I think Risk Factor's really stupidly good. But this deck runs three Experimental Frenzies instead. Runs these. Oops. Cuts this and runs one more of these. This actually makes more sense to me as a deck. Let me run this other sideboard. Hmm. Can I get a mountain, please? Please. Well, actually, which one do we want to run? Hmm. Which mono red deck do I want to run? There's a few different builds. You know, I, I, I'm actually going to cut the experimental frenzies. Cut this. Go back to the original version. Let's just let's just run it cold. Let's just run it cold, shall we? Lava oil, also lava coil, seems good. Put these in. Act of treason. This is a very weird sideboard. Like this sideboard, actually, I don't think I understand. Throne Frenzy seems to have anti-synergy with Light Up the Stage. It has synergy because uh, Light Up the Stage um, goes into exile, so it's not in your hand, so you can play from your hand. Um, let's see here. This also has an electrostatic field, lava coils, active trees, and direct current. Like, this is a very weird one to me. But I guess it's recurrent burn in a slower matchup. Fiery Cannonade, I 100% understand. I don't have three of them, so we will craft one. Risk Factor and Experimental Frenzy. It's kind of a funky sideboard, but that's fine. So I'm going to play just briefly Best of One. Yeah, you know, some of these other ones. How about Vance's Blasting Can? I don't even know what that card does. The thing that I think makes a ton of sense is that there is a good amount of enchantment removal. Skewer the Critics, so we probably just want to shoot once. Shoot twice. Get to two damage and swing in. Imagine a pulse congrats on the CAA signing. Yeah, yeah, we've been with CAA for a while now. A while now. The announcement just came out, but CAA is great. My nice pen, there it is. CAA, yes. I am in an agency, baby. I'm looking at some other lists right now. I, I personally... Uh, well, that's good news for us. I personally think that... I, I, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about some of these variants. I'm doing this main phase because... I want to punch in for the damage right now. Before there's any counter spell up. Um. <clears throat> there's a lot of enchantment removal with the reclamations. Wilderness Reclamation, the green untap everything card. So that, that's one of the things I'm kind of considerate of. Alright, and then we did it. straightforward, but we really run out of cards super duper 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 fast. And I, I don't actually get this particular sideboard very well. Like, there's this other deck that runs... It does run the Steamkins. Um, it doesn't run Fanatical Firebrands. It runs the Steamkins instead. It has Experimental Frenzy, which makes a ton of sense to me. 
Do I keep this? Opponent goes first? Seems good. And this one has a sideboard with, like, Bane Fires and Lava Coils and Treasure Maps and Fiery Cannonades and Fight with Fire. Like, that, that makes a ton of sense to me. Alright, so I think I just swing in and play a Lava Runner, yeah? I need to work on my mono red for some mono red. This is an interesting decision for Super Yo. Versus do you use best of one to get a handle on the deck before playing best of three and worrying about sideboarding? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's exactly correct. You're a correct Amundo, my friendo. I mean this seems like a pretty clear play, right? Shock, lava runner. Uh because we're going on to turn three, I think I just chill here. Turn three obviously leads to the Viachino, or not the Viachino, the Goblin Chain Whirler. But it says, so well aware I might sound dumb, but what is CAA? CAA is the name of an agency. And typically agencies do the following, where, uh, like the general idea of an agency is, Sean, you just focus on doing your own stuff. You just make content, and I'll handle a lot of the dealy stuff for you. Okay, so this just... I mean, yeah, we gotta do it this now, yeah. Sean, you just focus on your shows. We'll handle all the deals and the contract negotiations and the finding you deals, that sort of thing. Oof. And Eric and I have gone agent list for pretty much ever. Oh yeah, we definitely take this damage. Alright. Um, we've gone agent list because, you know, it's unclear what a lot of smaller agencies could do that we can't already do perfectly well ourselves. But CAA is like a very large, very massive agency that's been around for a very long time. You know, I think we just decline and cross our fingers and hope to die. Alright. Hoping to die works. <laughs> so yeah, there's that Variety article. Me and JP have been part of CAA for a little bit. So this seems okay. I think maybe a uh, mistake I'm making is not light up the staging as early as I could or should. We were a little conservative with that play, and I think that that was an error. This is why I like to play best of one, so I can like really understand and get a feel for things. Yeah, because like right here, for instance, we can light up the stage to draw. It feels like it's okay to Viachino here. Okay, so here's an example of where I think that my play is to light up the stage. Light up the stage, and we just see what we get first. Should 
should probably just be as efficient as I can. See, that felt really good to be able to get that extra mountain down. Dude, Light says, if you look at the card Amplifier at all, it seems to have exactly the kind of combo Timmy card that you might like to play. Um, I've looked at it. Today's focus, though, is just playing, like, top strong meta decks. Getting a feel for them. Black or white? Yeah, I'm going to be playing a white deck after this. That seems fine. So who was it that had the CIA question earlier on? Who was it that had that one? I hope I, I, hope I answered that question appropriately for you. Seems good. Man, light up the stage is a hell of a lot less awkward than... Experimental Frenzy. Seems good. Because we can actually just play both of these without any assistance from the G2 Lava Runner. We lose a Lightning Strike. All good to me. Our tempo ain't slowed. May as well just play the, all this stuff out now. Bang. Have to play this before our turn's done, or else it goes away. Opponent goes to eight, so we're kind of feeling good. But I think Esper Control. This is the, one of the other things that we're going to be playing today. Is this Esper Control deck? I'm so sorry, Gordini. I messed up the deck tracker again. That's a terrible play. Alright, Deck Master is up, and let me make sure it's enabled in Twitch. And it is enabled in Twitch. So you should be able to refresh to get your deck tracker stuff showing up. My apologies. Super duper my bad. What got unmoored egoed? This card sucks. Big time. I think I want to do this now. By the way, the, here's, here's the reason why unmoored ego sucks as a card. Okay, let's just ignore long term, right? Ignore for me long term. Oh my god, if they don't have their magical card X, they, how, how can they win now? Blah. Ignore that for a moment, okay? Ignore that for a moment. Unmoored Ego, choose a card name. You get to search the graveyard hand library and exile them. But the last sentence is the most important sentence to why I claim this card sucks. It says, that player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So what it means is that even if I have all four copies in my cards, I redraw four. So how much present tense card advantage do I lose? None. I lose zero. How much present tense card advantage do I lose? Zero. I lose zero present tense card advantage when Unmore Ego is done to me. But what our opponent did is our opponent spent three mana giving up a turn to discard one of their cards. So all our opponent has done thus far is paid three to discard a card. Um... The only circumstance in which Unmoored Ego is good is if you have identified your opponent has precisely one win condition. Precisely one win condition. What works is if Unmoored Ego exiles four cards from your library, then you draw zero cards? That's correct. That's correct. Because none of them are in your hand. 100% you got what Whoop Burger. And the idea is that, yeah, you might remove some 
threats for way later. But you, I, the caster of Unmoored Ego, have lost a card in my hand. My opponent has lost no cards in their hand, slash redrawn all the cards that they had to disco. This deck feels really gross. I'm getting a strong sense as to why this version runs Fanatical Firebrands. Remember a question I asked myself, like, maybe 10 minutes ago when I was looking at other ones? I said, wow, there's this other deck that appears to not be running. There's another deck that appears to not be running um, Fanatical Firebrands, and instead they're running Steamkins. Huh, isn't that interesting? We're really seeing the reasoning why now. This deck just kills by turn four a lot. So we're going to go ahead and leave the, uh, our shock up because green mana would indicate that there's going to be some sort of jade light monster. If there's not, then we don't lose any efficiency by shocking here. Okay. So I think we just do this. It's a little tragic that we can't actually pierce through for extra damage, but I think it's best to get the board presence up. Lucy Goosey says, how, do you th how do you, good do you think Unmoored Ego would be if it drew a card? Ooh, I think my, my realistic answer is I'm not, I'm not that good. I don't think I'm good enough to be able to make that statement. So I think this is, we do this, we shoot the face, and then we offer up the trade. Wow, no blocks. Perhaps this means it's going to be Wild Growth Walker plus Healy Dealies. Black mana. So this is Abzan. Shalai, what a guy. It looks like our opponent will die. So first we swing in to see what we get from light up the stage. Very clear blocks that are going to happen in here. I think our opponent may keep a mistake <laughs> Okay, so let me let me highlight something that I was looking at previously. I was looking at a red deck that had something like this going on. Uh, um, so it still has eight wizards here from four Gitu Lava Runners and four Viachino Pyromancer to be able to run Wizards Lightning. It still has. Uh, let me let me show this other list because I think that this list is actually very interesting. Uh, again, this is why I like to play best of ones. This is why I like to bang through a whole bunch of stuff to just kind of like get clarity. Uh, where is this deck? Blink. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so th this other deck that I was looking at, this other mono red deck, it ran the Wizards Lightning. It runs. Four shocks. It runs four lightning strikes. It also runs four experimental frenzies. Uh, light up the stage. It runs a bunch of these. And then it actually just runs two skewers. So this deck is interesting. When you look at this deck versus the one that we're doing, this deck has some thicker cards. It has four experimental frenzies in it. And the notable other difference is that instead of the one mana diagonal monkeys, there's four runaway steamkin. So note that the runaway steamkin has more synergy with the experimental frenzy because we can kind of generate and loop our mana. But this deck is a little slower, and and things are sort of tuning that way. This is again the most interesting question to me. With like new set just came out, how do we adjust the mono red deck? Well, I, there's already a really good mono red deck without any of the new cards. So how do we do it? And this is a, an interesting argument for how to construct it. Um, this has a different sideboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep doing our meta mono red, but in this time, I'm going to go ahead and go to best of three. So this is me just showing net decked lists and talking about them. We're going to do relatively little adjustments to decks throughout the day. 
We just kind of want to play. Okay, let's think. Any plans for the Esper mid-range with Dovin and Hero Precinct 1? Uh, I'm going to be um, possibly playing that Ninja Goldfish. I think more likely I'm going to be doing the... Um, well, I'm going to be doing the White Weenie Splash Blue deck. Because that's interesting to me. Great. Bonk. Now here's a question. Why would we want electrostatic fields? What would the electrostatic field replace? Hmm? Really clear play. Well, hmm. I kind of like Gitu Lava Runner, Wizard's Lightning, Wizard's Lightning. Not a lot of good counter spells available here. No Carnarium. Because that's sorcery speed. Maybe this is just going a little too damage heavy. Nice play from our opponent to syncopate this. But this is also kind of one of the plays that we got to play around. Could have just lobbed out the Chain Whirler and blowed ourselves up. Main phase chemistries. Do we do it? Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Not quite. I guess I just do this to create a more threatening board. If our opponent could have ritual of soot, our opponent would have ritual of sooted the prior turn. Good, 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 got him. See you later, alligator. So what I'm seeing is that without any efficient life gain, our deck pretty much stomps forward to victory. So I feel like a lesson that I'm learning for the sake of the meta, there is always red deck wins. This is always going to be a play. Uh, so I'm acknowledging that... Wait, where the hell's my sideboard? Oh, it's up here. Oh my god, and I freaked out for a second. So, what would be good in this matchup? I mean, I think just uh, Experimental Frenzy seems like the most reasonable one. Active Treason seems like not for this matchup. What seems like a cuttable friend? Maybe R Risk Factor seems like an acceptable card to try to board in. But I'm not entirely... Well, Lava Coil obviously comes out. That's a clear cut. But what would our other cuts be? I mean, we could also just not run this Experimental Frenzy. We've, we've cut a Lava Coil. That's a clear cut. We've put in a Risk Factor. I think that's pretty clear. This does seem to be like an important thing that we may wish to run. I think maybe we just cut the Goblin Chain Whirler. Goblin Chain Whirler is very, very good against creaturey things. Is there anything else? Like, would we ever try to put in two Direct Currents? That's plausible. 
I think the electrostatic fields are more for the mirror. I'm going to do small changes. Small changes. Maybe if I'm up against mono red aggro, I want to cut some of my more high end, put in some of my more low end. Maybe Diagonal Monkey maybe seems bad in the mirror. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Critter. We signed many moons ago, and it was just announced today. Pretty excited about it. Okie dokie. This is a bad hand, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing till turn three. Now there's a hand. Ah! I see diagonal monkeys, I hit keep. Is this a card that we value highly here? I think I want to chuck that one. Because this wizard's lightning is a little awkward. Running frenzy with factors is anti-synergy. That's why that's why this deck doesn't run any experimental frenzies. It has one in the sideboard, which I'm trying to understand. What's there? Okay, so we bonk right on in here, huh? This this is enough mana up for syncopate. So I think this is this is the play that I have to become more astute at jamming out. So I think I think I absolutely must sacrifice this to ping. I think attacking here is an enormous mistake. Holy shit. Maybe we should wait a turn on that puppy. Eh, well, whatever. Okay, so I do this, and then I just make, like, an Australian dinosaur hunter and shoot her. We're doing it, right? Risk factor again. These are a little obnoxious, but I think it's okay. Maybe I just let me do this. This is instant speed, so we just hang out for a second. All right, let's shock him. Shock and awe. Seems good. Seems très raisonnablement. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the general statement of this deck is you must have life gain. Or strong disables in the early game. Okay. 
Yeah, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I think that if I was up against a white weenie deck that went live, that's probably the situation in which um, I'd actually want those electrostatic fields, right? It's unclear what I would cut. Ouch. What a bastard. I think this hand was risky. It's like it's a risk factor. I think I just want the body. Like, if a Drake comes down, we have the Skewer Goblin Chain Whirler play to remove. Fire Cannon for White Weenies. I think I just cut, cut the troops. All right, let's, let's see what our opponent does here when we do this. Take that damage, Aster of Keld. See, like, the, the, here, let me actually narrow down what my, the, what I feel like the issue that I'm having is with the sideboard. Is I can describe what the value of each card in the sideboard is, but I cannot tell you what the cuts in the main deck are. Save for the exceedingly obvious things like Lava Coil against a control deck, right? I just don't need that. Ah, Wizard's Lightning. Risk Factor the Face, pro probably. Cast everything in hand. Chuck the mountain. Just look, see what happens. That's right, I've signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm a basketball player, everyone. Warming up by playing Magic, because if your mind isn't fresh, then... Oh, how can you expect your gameplay to be? Opponent does not particularly have a choice. Is this a mistakey? Yep. Why am I ever not shooting everything in the face, huh? made a mistake by not actually saving. I think that, that I think that that's what our error is. It makes makes a ton of sense. That's a good card. I did it. Also lethal with shock then skewer. Um, generally, be careful about making statements like that because uh, that's kind of like if our opponent doesn't have any answers, then there are two ways for us to get there. But if, for instance, our opponent had some sort of counterspell, I would have preferred to still have the burn in my hand and lose the creature on board. Okay, so how do we board against this? What do we do here? I guess maybe maybe cut the chain whirlers? These seem a little awkward against four toughness things. Th again, this is the hard part for me, is understanding what it, we cut in this. I think um, lava coils seem good here. Uh, maybe we put in electrostatic fields as well. What do we cut? Probably the firebrands. Treason might work well too, yeah. Risk factor seems good too. Do we want an act of treason here? No, I don't think so. Maybe yes. Yeah, maybe that's actually an intelligent decision. Drakes get huge, but it's what's in my graveyard, not their graveyard. So I'm trying to debate. I think I'm going to run one. 
because I mean, like, I, I think the act of treason will generally be a remove a blocker and deal three damage. But remove a blocker, you'll note that's less relevant because I just cut a whole bunch of creatures. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think with the number of lava coils that we have, their drake count should be relatively low. Relatively. This is a very cute sideboard in this deck. Very, very cute. So in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we're going to switch decks. Because that's that's our goal today. Big spread, just shotgun blast. New decks on the hour. Not on the hour, but about an hour. So, Fat Drake's fine by us? Nope. Okay. And I think we just Viashina here, yeah? Getting some damage. Love it. Alright. Our opponent will soon learn that we have placed lava coils into this deck. Soon enough. One dive down down, which I'm I'm pretty content with. What? Who runs Lava Coils? It's a terrible card. Getting it in for two. Woo! Keeping the Lava Runners was smart. This is just really nice. Haste. Uh, synergy. It's really good. I think we Risk Factor first. Yeah. What you wanna do? Play that puppy out. I do want the flexibility of the mana more so than the risk factorage. What am I using for the decks? I, I like MTG Goldfish, MTG Arena Pro. Alright, draw, 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 draw. Probably, probably a concession here. Yep, got him. All right, N nice help with the sideboarding plan, chat. That was super fantastic. You guys are great. You're at MTG top eight. Yep, great sight. Love it. Wow. See on the docket, we have a lot of the a lot of the all-stars we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing the white weenie splash blue. We're gonna be doing the God, I'm amazing. I love setting alarms for myself. This seems okay. We technically have a turn one, turn two, turn three play. Uh, we're going to be doing Esper Control. Probably going to do the Sultai mid-range. I'm interested in this Gruul aggro. This seems very tight. Feels very right. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of interesting aggro decks that I want to try out this morning. Shoot you in your teeth, Senda.
What's my secret to chewing to so quietly? It's a mute button. <laughs> That's your answer, answer Willow Tree TV. Um, uh, what was another thing I want to say? Oh yeah, my alarm just went off. I wanted to remind me to remind you about the day-night festival. When we're in sideboarding. Remind me to remind you about the day-night festival when we're in sideboarding. So what I will hope will happen is that when I do the swing, Moment of Craving, plops down and I can just calmly play a Chain Whirler. Good, 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 good. We like to be in a situation where four cards versus four cards. Search for Kanta helps a bit, certainly. I can probably do this announcement right now. I can probably do it right now as long as I do it slowly, casually, and confidently. So, on February 9th and 10th, that is a Saturday and Sunday, we're running what's called the Day-Night Festival. And the whole idea of the Day-Night Festival is we all get together on the Day-9 TV Discord and have essentially a LAN party environment, but all done online. And so by this, I mean to say, we will be running a whole bunch of various activities. Let me actually open up the website right now for it. All right, let me open up the website. Let me see if this actually works properly, if I can open it up, yeah. Oh, that's not it, let's delete this. And, yeah. So if you go to the day9.tv homepage, you'll see the day night festival right there. Uh, the whole idea is that we're going to have, like, a big old LAN party together. We're all going to play games online. It's going to be centered at the Discord, which is on discord.gg slash day9tv. It's this link right here. It's broken into two days. One of the days is focused on streaming. So I'll be live. Morniel will open with a, with a DJ set. 6 p.m. Jolteon will close out with her usual singing and guitar playing excellence. Sunday is what we call the Community Day. For those of you who are curious about... Uh, running events, hosting things, doing things like Dungeons and Dragons. We're doing a small constructed tournament in MTGA. There's an artifact draft. I should probably take my turn, huh? Alright, let's do some killing. Everything's easy when you're a red deck. Anyways, so the uh, so there's a community day, and those are just some of the events that are there. You can feel more than free to run your own event. I keep using the example if maybe you have some old school game like Europa Universalist 2 and you want to do like a four or five person game with that. Not a huge giant event, just like a small community event. Just find some other people who play the game and play with them. We have a bot that is activated that um, you can use to automatically generate that and send a message out to other people who might be looking for something similar. So, typically, we just have a whole bunch of people doing Overwatch, Dota, Warframe, um, group team games, hanging out in the channels and whatnot. Got him. How the hell do we do this sideboard plan, huh? Lava coil out, risk factor in. Do I get the electrostatic fields in here? I feel like I do. Probably the fanatical firebrands are the ones we cut. Try to get that in. Try to get this out. This feels... Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Fuck it, we're doing this. 
so yeah, we're doing that community event on February 9th and February 10th. You can feel free to go to our Discord now or go to that webpage, day9.tv, and you can just see the link there, click it, look up all the information, sign up, ask questions. There's plenty of time between now and then to get your stuff underway. But again, it's not this weekend, it's the following weekend. It's just a fun thing we do. Uh, on the stream day, by the way, we will be having, uh, we're going to be playing some Overwatch, some Dota 2, and of course the 100 person in house PUBG matches, which, however you feel about PUBG versus other. 100 person sh shrinking circle games. It is really fun when it is literally a 100 person in house. It's so amazing. It's so good. Oh my god! The man himself, the King of Sultai, Thundermo Hellkai, just hosted for 643 viewers. Mr. Mo. You know, I'm setting an alarm to make sure that I do a proper host. I have been irresponsible about hostings this week. Well, this week is the second day of the week. I lost internet at the end of yesterday's stream, so I couldn't actually do the hostitude that I wish to do. So we're just going to make sure that we remember it today. Set an alarm for 6.55 hosty. A lot of excellent Magic the Gathering streamers have been... Oh, this kind of sucks, but whatever, I don't give a shit. Um, we, uh... I've been getting a lot of hosting from really excellent Magic the Gathering streamers. We have a few auto-hosts set up, but I want to make sure that I'm sufficiently diligent in extending the hosting love. Just a nice thing to do, man. Just say, hey, hey, people that watch my stuff. Watch people that I watch. Strokes, this will be a plan for Dota noob slash not-so-good in-house. I'll just encourage everyone to play Clown Illy, <laughs> like 10v10 in-houses. I love 10v10 in-house, man. Hey, who who here is in, in the Midwest suffering the negative billion dollar temperatures? Oh my gosh. So many of you. Work got canceled. Hell yeah. BK Slacker's not working today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some dear buddies in Minnesota. For whom I am concerned. Alright, let's see if we can actually get in there. I feel like there's going to be some sort of removally doovally thing. I don't see a reason not to just do this. Shoot you in the face, huh? I shouldn't have done that here, but I can't hit Z when I've already flicked it out. Good. I feel like some damage is going to be coming in. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright. I think we shall absolutely begin with my favorite Bing Bong. What now, Simba? I crave this. It's me, the electrostatic field. I'm gonna go ahead and risk factor on the opponent's turn like a smarty pants. This is a cute tech. Alright, we're, we're doing this right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get that out. I think our opponent might be like, yeah, no. Draw all the cards you damn well please. Who she do she do she do? It's me. Niv Mizzet. Perun. Perun, Perun. I think we just won, right? So we first we do a, a shooty. Alright, that resolves, right? Do it. Hit me. So now that that is done, we shoot him. Wow, I think I'm really starting to see why people just think this red deck is like so good. Bang. 
Ugh. Maybe I should definitely shoot the field, right? I think so. I think it's, uh, you know, I take it back. I think it's very reasonable that our opponent did not shoot the electrostatic field because I think the logic is either our opponent has, either I have him dead or I'm really close to not having him dead. So I'll win the next turn. Therefore, the niv needs to shoot me in the face as much as possible to maximize the probability of winning in the circumstances where I don't have a kill there. Don't want to be on the play? You bet your whole butt. I do. Green man, a land or elves. Shock, pass, bang. Die. Whale united. Let's see if we can get a, a main chain in Spain. Wow, this is this is interesting. Like a lot of our homebrews did not struggle that much against. Nope. I see. We attack first. We then light up the stage, see if we can peel a land from that. We did. Do we want to light up the stage right now? We would drop two more cards. On average, it's a land. Yep, we do. Yeah, we do want to wait until... This part, I mean, they can counter, but it's fine. Wanna hit him on the upkeep. Bing bong him on upkeep, you know. My dog, no. Ugh. Alright, here we go. Diagonal monkey. Do I want to skewer now, or do I want to risk factor? I think I risk factor. I think risk factoring is a more successful turn here. The fanatical firebrand, I think, is the the one that we're correctly cutting here. I want to say, I think it's the one that we're correctly cutting. Not in this match, but in general, I think I've been pleased with the instances in which we have diagonal monkeyed. Now, why would you shock that in? Why shock that in, huh? What's the black man needed for? So we just win, right? So we main phase this, we main won this. Discarding a mountain. Because if we get another haster, fantastic. Our opponent can be uh, Mr. Dummy Dumb. Hello. So, it's plausible we have a kill here. We could also not. Very strong tech card in this meta, huh? So we probably in this matchup do want to be cutting those diagonal monkeys, huh? Probably, yes. Probably don't need this many mountains. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send them to Roasty Toasty Town. Hang on to both of these. I mean, it, it looks like I have land. Our opponent's at two mana. I have a deck full of burn. It looks like I have land in my hand, but, you know, occasionally this can bait out a thought seizure. All right. See you later, friend. Shoot that man. Bang. That was gross. It felt gross. I think it was gross. Cut this, cut the fanatical firebrands, bring in the electrostatic fields, bring in the risk factor, bring in the experimental frenzy.
What do you, uh, when do you think direct current gets peeled into this puppy? Do you think maybe I cut two chain whirlers, bonk in two direct currents? Yeah, yeah, that's, ooh, that's a good call. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's a hell of a nice call. Oh my god, this is really gross. This is a counter. So I don't think I want an electrostatic field here. I think I just risk factor. Oops, I should have done it on this upkeep. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, man. I'm making the mistakey. Great. Four damage. Really good. Get rid of this. I think I lightning strike now in the face. This is such an interesting cyborg plan. And I don't mean like I am amazing and interesting with what I'm doing, because this is, again, all of today is going to be net deck start to finish. Nice. I'm just saying that the, the sideboard plan that was constructed by the person whom we cribbed. Nice. So god. So, so, oh my gosh, nice. Swingy dingy firsty dirsty. Could be a fungal infection. So there's going to be a trade there. There's risk factor again. Put the counters down. Just discard the Vyashino Pyromancer, right? We're either getting in damage or getting to draw a bunch. Alright, so if we if we if we want to get countered, then we want to do it on our opponent's upkeep, so they just untapped. They have not drawn, so we do this. So this minimizes the probability that they will have a counter spell. And if they do have a counter spell, they have to burn through all their blue mana to be able to do anything about it. So no counter. So far, so good. Grand. God, electrostatic feels just a gross sideboard plan. Wow. One more best of three, man. These things are fast. <laughs> Alright, then we're going to do some white weenie. So good. Yeah. Eric, Eric is a believer that White Weenie, Splash Blue, is probably one of the strongest decks right now. Yeah, I eat a lot of spinach. I eat an obscene amount of spinach in my life. Let's see. 
I eat like 30 or 40 cups of spinach a week, man. I like just crazy, crazy amounts of spinach. Yeah, that's Popeye mode, man. Doesn't too much spinach have some negative effects? I have no idea if you went. All of nutrition is a big pile of nonsense, 100% of it. It's all just like, did you know that too much or too little of everything you are and are not eating and will not eat? It's not enough, it's too much. Go ahead and blow up this hero. <laughs> Spinach doesn't have the most residual pesticides even after being washed. Or being washed. Well, damn, 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 damn. If I swing here, well, there's no good trades for Mr. Piggy. Got him. Go ahead and whirl the chains on this one. We're not gonna skewer. Yeah, everything related to nutrition is, is just too much. There's not enough. You're definitely gonna die. There's no way you're gonna die. It'll make you live longer. It'll kill you faster. Caffeine wakes you up, stops your heart. Oh, we are not on main. There we go. Gross! Alright. So, what the heck do we do here? I think Fiery Cannonade is actually probably probably better than Lava Coil here. Not sure what we cut, though. I, I really want to know what this list is. Because I know that they run, like, Deputy of Detention, Thief of Sanity. They run the Bell Haunt. Actually, this, this seems bad. Do we want more of these coils in here? I feel like we do want the coils. That seems right. That seems right. Seems right, seems right, seems right, seems right. Maybe we don't want the monkeys. I think we do want the monkeys. Not gonna change it terribly much. Seems pretty good. Mm, diagonal monkeys. They get pretty diagonal pretty fast. I think sideboarding is such a fascinating component to Magic Man. I love that. Love this shit. Oh, oh my god. I so want to get some stuff into the graveyard right now. Oh, I so want to have spells in that graveyard. Oh. Oh. Would this sideboard a mortify? Not a mortify. Uh. This your record of uh. Another one of these puppies out. Well, she it. Right, because, I mean, 
probably gonna trade here. That's probably fine. So we just say yes. Don't play the G2 Lava Runner because we can risk factor and Wizard's Lightning to give it haste next turn. Okay, so now we gotta risk factor this. Oh, that's a beaten. Okay, so... I mean, I think this is this is the clear player, aren't we? I think maybe we don't get a block in some of those situations. Do I want to skewer the critics? Probably want to hold on to the removal. I think our initial intuition to just get the hell out of this game was the correct one. Um, these seem pretty cute. Let me think here. Maybe the lava coils are a bad idea. I think I, I think I just want the burn into the face. Act of treason for Lyra. I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the heck I cut. Maybe, we, maybe we do cut the lava coil. It's weird. Lava coil seem good here with bigger creatures. Yeah, I'm trying to debate. I'm trying to figure out what I, what it is I want to do. Like, it seems like there's some good walls that we're up against. Because I think there's so much heal. I think... I think I just go more on the burn plan. Trying to kill them faster and faster and faster and faster. Oh, this... this I'm... This is such a useful game. Because in the last few games, I just feel like... Yeah, we just start off and we shit on the man and... What 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 else, right? <laughs> this is the sort of game that's really valuable for me to like. Get a better shape of the sideboard. I, I feel always leery of cutting Lava Runners or Pyromancers because they're wizards and we're running four wizards like this. So, at the very least is my logic in that regard. Arrow of the Precinct. Gotta kill the Hero of Precinct 1. This is a very cool card. It's it's like a two-mana uh, Legion War Boss, man. Remember this turn? Can you again? Nicodemus for 69 months. 69 months, Nicodemus. 69 feeling so fine. 
I hate these turns. But this thing doesn't grow, so I'm gonna... Shoot him. Nope. No attacks, no taken backs. Basilica Bell Haunt. What an, what an exquisitely anti-aggro tool. Our hands are typically emptying themselves of valuable cards. My remaining hand is typically big, burny things. So one of those gets discarded. Wow, that's great. What a play! And the opponent's gonna heal for three. I think I think we we dead. I wanna chuck the pyro. Here, just chuck this. This double skewer turns hurt a bit. See, okay, so there there is a statement that your pal Day9 made a long time ago, at the start of today. I was trying to I was I, I started to bring back and then I released my mouse to like cancel. <laughs> just try to do it on their turn. And then uh nothing happened. Uh, anyways. Uh, something we said long ago at the start of the day is I think that if you just have some heal, you shut this type of red deck down. And I think that's that's becoming true and true. If you have a turn two play and some heal. Oh, what an what an educational hour. That was great. No. Health is a resource. Take it in the face, Mr. Piggy. What's Vance's Blasting Candy? Vance Blasting Candy. Vance's Blasting Cannon reads. Beginning your upkeep, exit top card. Library, it's an online card. You may cast this turn. Oh, what? It's a land that shoots? Oh. Main phasing this. Disco the Mountain. Die, Mr. Piggy. I won't get another chance like this! He advances blasting chance pretty great. C'est intéressant. Uh oh, Mr. Piggy's looking. This Piggy be hunting. Ooshy douchey. Two in the bin, random card on the top. Hero Precinct 1, I bet. Dovin, Dovin, Dovin. Could bind a minute three treaties on your socks. I mean, we must go for this, right? We wanna we wanna draw three. Sub ninety four one says, "Hey Sean, have you ever tried or tried? Have you ever had interest in any FPS games?" Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that hurts a lot. Yeah, man. CS. Love Counter Strike. Love me some sweet ass Counter Strike. Oh, is this this side of the face? Ah, yes. This is not at the correct angle. Yeah, I was wondering why. I was wondering why I was so bright. Ah. Uh, on blocks? No, not a chance, man. Are we serious? Our opponent voluntarily went to a life. There's gotta be something flashed in or something that I'm not thinking of. So many thopped earth. Why, why does this game like? Is that just what his text reads? Oh yes, it is what his text reads. Holy guacamole. Look at me, it's the Gitu man. I'll Gitu and Gitu as fast as I can. Can I attack? Nopey nope man. No absorbing. Oh, we're dead. 
first, little mi little piggy, man. This house was made of wood. Alright. <laughs> he beat us to death with logs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 